New on Curiosity Stream, how do you connect a 16th century potato to limitless energy production? Could Napoleon's toothpick have a direct link to a machine that predicts the future? And how can a 1700s conch shell chart a course to humans connecting their brains to the internet? James Burke's visionary series Connections returns for a new generation. Experience all new Connections with monthly annual and bundled plans. Find the one that works for you at curiositystream.com. Your home is more than the sum of its parts. And creating a truly extraordinary space is about more than picking the perfect products. That's why the experts at Ferguson Bath, Kitchen, and Lighting Gallery are here to help you throughout the entire process to create a home that's as unique as you are. Bring your vision to us. Schedule your showroom consultation and see more from brands like Monogram at build.com slash Ferguson. Theater presents... the veneer of behavior and what you see beneath is often far from attractive. Were it not for the fact that every day we were being weighed, would we be found wanting in the balance? If so many were not looking and watching us, how would we behave? They say that hate is the dark side of love. That may be. But in the tale we're about to unfold, no affection could be as intense as the black, malevolent, raw emotion called jealousy. I envy you, John. You're free. You can live as you wish. Would you like to travel, Sarah? No. I'm not a wanderer. That's not it. You just feel that you have to get out of this town, right? That life is passing you by? Yes. That's it. Passing me by. It doesn't have to. You mean run away? Leave my husband? Think about it. Our mystery drama, Flashpoint, based on a classic by H.G. Wells, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by James Agate, Jr., and stars Felicia Farr and Kevin McCarthy. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Ah, the summertime. Time for swimming pools, barbecues, and all kinds of outdoor activities and fun. But also time for extra safety precautions. To make your summer more enjoyable, Underwriters Laboratories want you to please remember that water and electricity never mix. Water or dampness increase the possibility of a shock hazard. So avoid using electrical appliances where they might fall into a pool or wet surface. Also, refrain from using electric rotisseries or power tools where they may get wet. And never attempt to use an electric lawnmower or hedge trimmer when your grass or shrubbery is wet. And remember, outdoor extension cords are designed and tested to withstand conceivable climate conditions. So be certain the extension cord you use outdoors is labeled for outdoor use. This is summer safety information from UL and this station.
H.G. Wells was a writer of many worlds, indeed even of a war between worlds. He takes us now to the world of ironworks, the red-hot hell of the blast furnaces where metal is melted and rolled and the sky filled with smoke and black dust. Men with unrecognizable faces stoke the fires, puddle the iron, and keep the mills rolling. Into this world of Pennsylvania industry, there arrives one John Roth, a writer for one of those slick magazines that cover the universe each month in 65 pages. I just couldn't leave tonight, Sarah. I had to see you once more. But it's all arranged. Where we'll be meeting tomorrow in the city. Silly. Silly, isn't it? But I had to see you again. Just had to look at your sweet face once again. My dearest John. Do you think he suspects anything? Not him. He has no imagination. No poetry. <laughs> poetry. That's what my editor asked me to look for when he sent me out here. Did I tell you that, Sarah? I thought he was crazy. Oh, Roth, he said, I want you to go up there and write a feature on those people. But don't give me a story about weary men and careworn women. I want to see the beauty of the place. Your editor ought to sit in this window and look out at our stiff black trees. <laughs> beauty of the place. If it weren't for him, I would never have met you. I can see your face. When was it? A week ago? <laughs> when Horrocks walked in the door with you and I looked up and... And you looked at me? You know, I've always meant to ask you about that. You know, your husband calls you Sarah, and you call him by his last name. I... I always have, I guess. Here it goes. Every hour, day and night, carrying coals and furnaces. Mm, oh, it sounds like she's coming right through this house. <laughs> Smoke! Under the door, through the window. How do you stand it? get used to it. I lived up this way when I was a kid. I guess that's why the editor asked me to go. Thought I'd get along with the workmen, speak their languages. You're very good, John, at bringing people out. You know, when I was a boy, all this country was fresh and beautiful, and now it's hell. <laughs> that's what the nights are all summer long. So hot you could cry. You don't think he's suspicious or anything? Huh, not he. Well, tonight's going to pass quickly. And then you can say goodbye to all this filth. Tomorrow, everything will be clean. I can almost, almost not believe it. Tomorrow. My darling. Oh, my darling, give me your sweet little hand. Uh, one week ago, I didn't know you, John. How life can change you in, in one week. Oh, my dear one. My dearest, John. Unknown to us, a real door had opened. And when it shut, it was like a pistol going off. He stood in the corner of the room, the shadow making him look twice as big. When had he opened that door? What had he heard? What had he seen? Good evening. Uh, good evening, good evening. I was afraid I'd missed you, Mr. Horrocks. I've been down to the post office and sent off as much of the article as I'd finished, and I thought I, you know, I ought to stay over one more night, and I, and you promised to, uh, uh, to show me some fine effects of the moonlight and the smoke. Did I? Promised to show you some fine effects of moonlight and smoke. Yeah, and I, I thought I might catch you tonight before you went down to the works and come with you. Of course. I promised to show you the works under their proper dramatic conditions. Well, if I'm troubling you... It... No, not in the least. I mean, I, I, I was planning after you showed me around the place one last time to take the midnight local back to the city. There's a lot to see. Horrocks has a theory that machinery is beautiful and everything else in the world ugly. Well, well, I can't say as how I disagree with that. Well, it is one great theory. His one discovery in art. I'm slow to make discoveries... But when I discover... Oh, yes, Horrocks. Tell us. Nothing. I suppose you wouldn't want to eat before you go back to the works. No, I'm not hungry. <laughs> I don't know how you keep up your strength. I manage. He is very strong, Mr. Roth. All the men say so. But I promise to show you the works. You ready to go? Yes, 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 indeed. Very well. Let's be off, then. 
You'd better say goodbye to Mrs. Horrocks. Oh, yes. Yes. Good evening, Mrs. Horrocks. What did he mean? You'd better say goodbye. Why goodbye? Why not so long or au revoir? Oh, that's crazy. These iron men don't say things like au revoir. No, no, no. He doesn't know anything about... He couldn't guess anything. Where are we? Where are we? He's leading me along the path beside the railroad. I can see the blast furnaces up ahead. So you almost finished what you were writing, Mr. Roth. Well, I talked to everybody I could find, thanks to you. Now all I need is a little uh, descriptive poetry. All those fine effects you mentioned. Fine effects. Oh, yes, yes. Everywhere. I'll show them to you. I'm not a poetic man, Mr. Roth, but I got eyes. These tracks along which we're walking... They're the veins and arteries of the furnaces. Tons of coal roll along here every hour. A bloodstream feeding the furnaces. That's good. A bloodstream. Very good. You see down there those big fat white sparks? Mm -hmm. Steam hammer makes those. Watch it. One misstep and you're down that embankment and we'd never find you. I couldn't tell whether Horrocks had pushed me or grabbed at me. He lifted me up as if I were a toy and set me down closer to the tracks. I looked up at him, and his face broke into a big smile. (laughs) You stick close by me. I'll take care of you good, Mr. Roth. Come on. We've a ways to go. We get across the tracks before the next coal train comes. Every hour, you know. Not enough room for a man to stand on this side. Hey, hey, easy. You know, you're pulling my arm off, Mr. Horrocks, dragging me along like this. Oh, am I? I'm only concerned with your safety. Come on, we got to move. A step high here, over the tracks. Good. Take a deep breath. Smoke is good for the lungs. Yeah, here comes food for my furnaces. Black, heavy, rich coal. Mr. Horrocks? That sign up there, what does it say? Beware of trains. I wrote that on a piece of board 25 years ago. That was right after my father stood here, talking, one foot on the tracks. Didn't figure the train was coming so fast. Cowcatcher caught him, threw him 50 feet into the air, right back onto the tracks. Nothing left to recognize afterwards. He was the manager of the works before me. You've had a hard life, Mr. Horrocks. I fought for every inch. That's why I aim to keep what I've won. Ah, here she comes. That big round eye of light can hypnotize you. Fine effect, wouldn't you say? Horrocks! Horrocks, let go! Horrocks! What are you doing? His hand held me like a vice, swinging me back onto the tracks. I pushed with all my strength against his iron arm. And suddenly, I was hauled forward out of danger. What had happened? I was filled with doubt. If he meant to push me in front of the train, why had he rescued me? Didn't you see it coming, Roth? I guess I didn't. It came on faster than I thought. Well, it's the dark of the night and then that big headlight. Hard to judge distance and speed. It was deceiving told you about my father. You know, Mr. Horrocks, I, I think I've seen about enough tonight, and I think I'll head me over to the railroad station. Oh, no, laddie, no, 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 much more. Huh? The cones, that's a rare sight. You'll be right above it, right over the furnaces. Uh, you got to see it from there. It's like staring down into a volcano. But you can't miss that. That coal train, I'm still shaking. <laughs> You're safe with me, Mr. Roth. I wouldn't have had you run over then for the world. Still, writer John Roth is not sure that James Horrocks means what he says, that he is safe with the Iron Master. Nor is he certain that Horrocks is unaware his wife is going to leave him in the morning. Surely Horrocks wouldn't do anything dumb. Even if a wife was running out on a husband, would any man in his right mind push his rival under a train for that? 
That is, presuming James Horrocks is in his right mind. My bet is we'll know a great deal more when I return with Act Two. Hey there, home improver. You see the old paint on your house is wearing a little thin? And so is your bank account? Well, right now you can save a bundle, Bunky, at your Olympic dealer. Buy four gallons of any one Olympic product and get one more free. Olympic Overcoat, the house paint made to cover old paint. Olympic Stain in both oil and latex. Hurry, one free with four on all Olympic products till September 16th at your participating Olympic dealer. He's in the yellow pages. Jumping off of a mountain, driving a truck, learning how to ski, or learning how to survive by yourself. That is a learning process to overcome the unknown. In the Army, your mind and body are challenged every day because the most important thing you have to depend on is you. For more information, see your local Army representative. Here's a letter from Maria. Maria? My friend down in Brazil. Oh. She says her little brother was very sick, but at the clinic, the people from Project Hope helped his doctor to make him well. That's great. What's Project Hope? Project Hope? Well, that's a group of doctors and nurses who share their medical skills with others in developing areas of the world. Uh, let me show you something. You see this pebble? Uh-huh. Well, we drop it into the pond. And what happens? It makes ripples, and they're spreading out bigger and bigger. Okay. The Project Hope teams teach others who teach others and so on, so those medical skills spread out and multiply just like those ripples. Well, I can tell Maria is happy. She says, obrigado, Project Hope. Obrigado? That's how Brazilians say thank you, Project Hope. A generation of hope helping save lives and make them better in 25 countries, including ours. Give to Project Hope. Room A, Washington, D.C., 2007. Help make waves. A man of iron, a plain man, a man who works with his hands, suspects that the visitor from the city is trying to ensnare his wife. Horrocks, manager of blast furnaces versus Roth, writer for Slick Magazines. A study of fear, hate, terror, and jealousy. A train of coal cars hurtles through the night. What had happened a moment ago? Was I imagining it? Or had Horwich actually held me onto the tracks in the path of the train? Does he know something? Or suspect something? Or is my nervousness just guilt? Or was I just now within a hair's breadth of being murdered? Is that possible? Who knows? Who really knows? A man with the primitive instincts of possession, suspecting I was after his woman? I must do what I can to throw him off the scent. Now, there's a thing of beauty. Those big high cylinders boiling inside, smoke lifting out. They're giants, goliaths, that's the word for them. I mean there, Roth. There you have real beauty. Black clouds pouring out. Smoke you can see and taste for miles. Look here, they say. Man is working. Man is making the tools to live by. Man is here. Well, you certainly have a way of putting things, Mr. Horrocks. That furnace to the right is my pet. Seventy-five feet of him. I packed him myself and he's been boiling away cheerfully with iron in his guts for five whole years. <laughs> I have a particular fancy for him. Yeah, see that? I tipped a truck full of coal into his mouth. And it says thank you. And belches out those red flames. I say these giants are just as living as you or me. Certainly you get some fine effects of color with your furnaces. Oh, color. You want color. <laughs> I'll give you color. I don't hang back, Roth. I know these tracks like the back of my hand. I'll take you by the arm. You won't fall. Just come along with me. Color, eh? <laughs> 
bear's color. See? See there that string of green lights, of red, the white lights? Signals for my bloodstream railroad. The track is clear. Come along, you rusty trucks. Feed coal to my friends. <laughs> you have an eye for effect, Roth. It's a fine effect. Write it down. Oh, no, I don't have to, Mr. Horrocks. I've got a good memory. I often wonder what makes you fellas do all that writing. You must have great old times going to faraway places where there are stupid, ignorant men and women. You must have yourself a great old time. <laughs> the women, eh? City man comes to the country. <laughs> I bet they like your curly hair. I haven't been to many faraway places. Now, the path follows the rail line, and we'll climb up this way. Hey, wait a minute. Stop a minute and look around. See that line of red there? Hmm? What color would you call that, Roth? Uh, warm orange, I'd say. A match. Never at a loss for words. <laughs> I bet you charm the aprons off them. What's, uh, what is that burning down there? Puddler's furnaces. Oh, I don't think I told you about that. We change the pig iron to wrought iron by stirring it. It boils up and the men stir it. They're called puddlers. They stir and stir and out comes the carbon and any other impurities. I have to remember that. I have often thought... If only you could remove the evil and impurities in man by boiling and stirring. Hey, you see the white splash of the steam hammer? That's the rolling mills. Did I tell you about that? You know what comes out of there? Sheet tin. Amazing stuff. Glass mirrors couldn't show a person what he looks like nearly as well. All right, come on. Much more to see. What is that? Is that an elevator that runs up alongside that furnace? Uh, we'll take it all the way to the top. Climb on. Hold tight. Every time I go up, I think I'm on a flying carpet. Like some storybook Aram. Just a little railing around it, and up she goes. What's it used for? You'll see when we get to the top. She'll go right down again, and the men will push on the trucks. That's how we get the iron ore and the coal and the lime at the top of the furnace. Uh, sounds dangerous. No place for a woman, I'd say. A woman? <laughs> Couldn't do you much good up here. All right. Last stop, mind your step. Well, this catwalk is all open grading. Seventy foot down she is. Look around you. Beautiful view. Yeah. Here is man overcoming the insignificance of the world. Iron, tin, all being fashioned here. What is it, Roth? What is it, man? I must have fainted. The altitude, the tumbling fire below, writhing in the pit of the furnace, searing my eyes, the stink of sulfur bitter in my nostrils. Suddenly... All I could remember was that first day and the way I met Horrocks' wife, Sarah. Hello. Good morning, Mr. Roth. Are you looking for my husband? Well, I'm ashamed to say that the first day here, I'm... Well, I've overslept. Well, Horrocks is gone for the day, I imagine. Uh, but if you go down to the blast furnace, they'll find him for you. Well, I uh, suppose I could begin here, after all. Well, what is it you're beginning at, Mr. Roth? You know World Picks magazine? Oh, we don't get many magazines. I go to the library a lot, uh, but the kind of books I read, it's... It's hard to get them, poems and songs and things. Oh, really? Hmm. Well, I, I, I would have thought where living is so hard, well, I should have thought... Uh... Thought what? I don't know why I'm saying that. Why should I have thought that? Funny, but that's what my editor asked me for, you see. He said, give me the poetry of the place. Not just the sweat, if, if you'll excuse me. You're going to write about the rolling mills and the furnaces poetically? <laughs> it's anything but that. Well, why do you put up with it, then? I married it. I see. Oh, no, you don't. I was educated once. Went to a good school. Thought I might like to paint once, but 
Parks came along, I guess you could say, like like in all those novels, he just swept me off my feet. He's a big man. Oh, a big man. Yes, big man. It's, it's fascinating for a young... a young girl. He was exciting then. It's, it's still exciting sometimes to be married to a man like that. Yes, yes, I can understand that. Sometimes I... I get to thinking there, there must be more. I mean, in a, a spiritual way, more. Then you shall have it. How? He is he, and I am me. I'll come back, and we'll talk. How long do you expect to be here? A week. Yeah, a week. I've got a lot of interviewing to do and sites to write about. These articles take time. I'll come back one day. I'll see you, Sarah. I, I like the way you said that. But what's your first name? John. See you, John. Hey, hey, Ross. Ross, get up. Get up. Oh, what happened? That's what I'd like to know. You passed out. Heat got to you, I guess. Oh, oh that's dumb of me. I'm, I'm sorry. Have you, have, you, have you seen my... Oh, darn it. My briefcase is gone. I didn't see you carrying no briefcase up in the elevator. Well, I... I must have dropped it down by the train. Yeah, nice leather one, I remember. Well, I'll take a look for it when I go down. No, I'll find it if it's there. Well, of course. That's what I meant. The both of us. We'll look for it together. I didn't like the way Horrocks said that. I don't know whether you caught the inflection... We writers, we have an ear for the way people say things. It points the finger at what they really mean. The way he said, of course, that's what I meant, the both of us. We'll look for your briefcase together. He didn't mean together. Your home is more than the sum of its parts. And creating a truly extraordinary space is about more than picking the perfect products. That's why the experts at Ferguson Bath, Kitchen, and Lighting Gallery are here to help you throughout the entire process to create a home that's as unique as you are. Bring your vision to us. Schedule your showroom consultation and see more from brands like Monogram at build.com slash Ferguson. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered Jumbacasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby, mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa, take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Man alone. He does know about Sarah. Maybe she even told him. You can't completely trust a woman. I think he's going to kill me. Up here, 75 feet over the ground, give me a push and who would know? An accident, they'd say. You see that, Ross? Hanging over the top of the furnace? That's the cone I was telling you about. When did you tell me that? These furnaces used to be hotter and better before we shoved those cones down their throats. The flames used to flare out of the open throats. Of course, we wasted a lot of heat. Now we run off that into pipes and burn it to heat the blast. And the top is shut by the cone. Hey, you see what the cone's doing, swinging like that? It's hung by a chain from a level. It's all balance. Yes. Yes. Yes, it's pretty. Whew. That big burst of fire and smoke. <laughs> we throw in the fuel. The cone dips. <laughs> Like that. Ooh. See? <coughs> the fire comes right up at you. Oh, uh, Mr. Horace. Uh, it's too warm up here for me. Besides, I don't like heights very much. I never did. Too hot for you? Yeah, I can get just as good a visual effect of the thing from down below. Ah, uh, a little heat won't hurt you. And if looking down 60 or 70 feet gets too much for you, why, turn your head the other way. Smoke and the fire became unreal. And in its place, there was a green tree. And Sarah, could that have been only the day before yesterday? Do you know, this is the only tree for miles around that's still green. 
It's the only place the birds have to come to. I'm glad we're seeing each other here. What time should you be going back to the house? He may not come home for dinner, but, but I'd better be home by six just in case. We've got the whole afternoon. Where are you supposed to be right now, John? <laughs> I am exactly where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> <laughs> you writers, your time is all your own. Oh, I've been very busy since I took on the story. Don't you kid yourself, young lady. I've interviewed, well, let's see, I'd say five or six people a day for five days. And that's about 30. Mr. Horrocks himself is 31. Me? 32. No, I'd say I've got as good a picture of life in an iron town as anyone could have. And next week you'll you'll be somewhere else. Will you be sorry? You know I will. Would you like to travel? No. I'm not a wanderer, a, a, a gypsy person. That's not it. No, I know what it is. You do? Oh, yeah, sure. You feel you have to get out of this place, this town. Life is passing you by. I... I think so. Yes. Life is passing me by. It doesn't have to. You mean... You mean go away? Leave Horrocks? Think about it. If you like, when I go back to the city, I'll put you up. You can come and stay with me. Isn't it, Roth? Right down there in the middle of that cylinder, do you know it's near a thousand degrees? If you were dropped into it, pal, you'd flash into flame like a pinch of gunpowder in a candle. I know. It's the poetic description you're looking for. All right. Did you ever see such reds? Even the vapor is blood red. Red and hot. To sin. If you turn your head just a little to where the moonlight falls on the catwalk, why, it's dead. What? White is dead. How graphically H.G. Wells portrays his characters and their lives. The fascinating thing about his writing is that you can almost smell the smoke, sense the heat. And see the flames that are consuming iron ore and the souls of these people. Life and death sway on that catwalk 70 feet above the ground. I shall be back shortly with Act Three. Grease stain, oil stain, mud stain, and chocolate. When you want a tub stain, out, shout it out. Now you can prove shout's a mom's best friend. Before washing, just spray it on a tough stain. Wait a few seconds. Turn over the fabric and see how Shout penetrates right through to the other side. That's right. Shout saturates, really penetrates. It's almost like spraying both sides of the stain at the same time. So when you want a tough stain, I'll shout it out. I always thought that leaving home would be so easy then. Now I'm gone, I wish that I could see you both again. It's hard to say I love you, but I've got to find a way. Though it's never been easy to say. If you love them, tell them. You're not as far apart as you think. A thought from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Mormons. In a CB-related story out of Hampton, Virginia, a woman who found herself being followed down a dark street by a suspicious-looking car used her CB to call for help. As Someday you may need all the CB help you can get. When that time comes, you want the built to take it power and performance of a Royce CB. Of course, you may never need all the power and high-performance features we build into every Royce CB, but why take a chance? Make your CB a Royce CB, because someday you may need all the CB you can get. Ben Franklin, products you know, prices you'll like. Are your carpets as clean as you'd like? It's easy to clean them yourself with Rinse and Back, the do-it-yourself carpet cleaning system. It's lightweight, simple to use, and does a big cleaning job at a little cost. Rent a Rinse and Back at participating stores. It's The 
line between danger and death gets narrower and shorter with every passing second. Horrocks is in his element, Roth out of his. But the question uppermost in my mind derives from this story's title. What will be the flashpoint? When will threats become deeds? When will this war of nerves explode? That moment, I felt as close to the gates of hell as I had ever in my life. An ordinary man wouldn't dream of revenging himself like this, but Horrocks was no ordinary man. Was all of this some wild and weird prank of his, a joke? Terrorizing me in his inimitable, friendly fashion? Drop me over the side of the catwalk into that cauldron? Would a sane man do that for a woman? Especially Sarah. Beautiful, isn't it? I knew that you, as a writer of serious stuff, would appreciate it, Roth. Well, that's quite a metaphor you just gave me. Did I? Red and hot as sin, white as death. You have a lot of imagination, Mr. Horrocks. <laughs> My wife would agree with you, but she says it's the wrong kind. Well, in fact, perhaps you have too much imagination. What do you mean by that? You might be imagining things that aren't so. Is that true, Mr. Roth? Imagining things that could make a man do things he might regret. <laughs> I won't regret anything. You might, but I won't. Well, now it's my turn to ask what you mean. You don't know, do you, Mr. Big City Writer, with your big city ways? No. I haven't the slightest idea. Now, take your hands off me. Oh, now, only a friendly gesture. You're not afraid of me, are you, Mr. Writer? But I'll tell you something. I'm not afraid of you either. All right, then, if you don't like my arm about your shoulder. Eh, funny. Coming from you who likes to put his arm around people... Like my wife, Sarah. It's not true. I suppose to be a good writer, you have to be a terrible liar. And you're a terrible liar, Mr. Roth. And I'll tell you something else. I should be thankful to you. Take her with you. Take her far away from me. She's been no wife to me. One eye looking at me, one eye looking at someone else. You think you're the first? Mr. Mr. Horrocks, now, can't we treat this like grown men? She's nothing to you? Well, she's nothing to me either. That's really the way it is. Oh, I see. She's nothing to you. Well, that makes it a little different. Well, of course it does. I knew you'd understand. I could strangle you. She's nothing to you, is that it? No, I, 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 I don't mean exactly that. She's a dear person, but... I had no intention of interfering with your marriage. Neither did the others. What What others? They tried, but they left. Somebody even got a little overheated, you might say. <laughs> You're not telling me that... I don't believe it. You couldn't. I'm not telling you what, Mr. Writer. That Mr. Lawyer and Mr. Photographer... Several other misters didn't ask me personally to show them around the ironworks. I don't understand. Oh, yes, you do, but you hope you don't. There was a certain Mr. Granger who taught school. He had a lot of books to lend certain people, including Sarah. He had curly hair, something like yours. Or was he the doctor? <laughs> it's hard to remember. But I was showing someone how the puddlers stir the molten pig, and the dear man became so interested, he lost his balance. And, of course, his life. I want to leave here now. You send for that elevator. Don't you want to hear about the others? Of course. You're the first, Mr. Roth, who were interested in the uh, poetry of these ironworks. There's much more to be seen from up here. Horrocks, I'll forget everything you told me. See, I don't remember a thing. Not even the soft face of my Sarah? No, 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 not a thing. Never forgotten, forever. Mr. Roth, I do believe you are trembling. Why do you imagine the worst? 
Because I'm three times stronger than you, perhaps I was just going to teach you a little lesson. Put a little fear in here. What? But I think I was mistaken. You're past teaching anything to me. You're way past learning. Hot, isn't it? All that fire and molten metal. Did I tell you the temperature down there in the heart of the furnace is a thousand degrees? One thousand. Hey, that's one of my favorite old furnaces, too. Him and me are good friends. Put your hands out, Rock. Uh, Hold on to the handrail. It's secure. It won't buckle. <laughs> my old baby. Lean out and feel the heat of his breath. Why, even way up here, I've seen the rainwater boiling off the trucks. Now take that coal. See, it's hanging out over the hot mouth by a chain. Oh, I wouldn't want anyone to happen to step off the catwalk onto that. Too hot even to roast cakes on. 300 degrees. That much? Centigrade, mind you. It'd boil the blood out of a human being in no time. Oh, let go of me. Oh, let go of my arm. You stupid city fool. Uh, Woman hunter. Uh, let go. Uh, of that rail. Uh, uh, Duke. Uh, Duke. Uh, oh. I don't much like being the one who brings the news. When we have an accident like this, the, the hardest part is the telling about it. I, I can understand why it's hard for you, too. These things don't often happen, but the terrible part of our kind of work, I've always said so, sir, is that there's never a, a body left to bury. It all gets consumed in the iron. And this isn't the first time. There's iron holding up bridges all over the world with men's bones mixed up in it. Uh, look, Nanny, if you don't mind, sir, I, I'd rather I wasn't the one to bring the news. Would you mind very much? No. Oh, thank you. There's bound to be upset feelings, and I'm not a very good one to deal with that. Good morning to you, sir. And I'm, I'm sorry, very sorry. You? Where's... Sarah, may I come in, please? Now, Sarah, you have to stop shaking like that. Try to get a hold of yourself. I can't help it. It's taken hold of me as if I have no control over my body anymore. I'll make us some coffee. Now, you sit here. Just wrap that blanket around yourself. Keep warm. And oh. I'm sure I can find everything in the kitchen. No, no. no don't go, Mr. Roth. Uh, would you mind? Get, just come back and, and sit where you were. Uh, sit here with me in the living room. Please, don't leave. D don't leave me, please. All right. What a night it's been. Were you with Harks all the time, Mr. Roth? Sarah, can I ask you, what, what, what is it? I mean, suddenly you're so formal. This Mr. Roth business. What are you talking about? Well, we're not exactly strangers, Mr. Roth. I, I don't know what you're talking about. All right, forget it. I'm sorry I mentioned it. Just suddenly we don't know each other? Well, we're not friends. I only met you a, a week ago, Mr. Roth. My husband introduced us. You were writing an article about blast furnace people for a magazine. I, I don't know what you expect of me. Nothing, nothing, Mrs. Horrocks. Did, did you say you were with my husband the, the whole time? I was, I was. He uh, took me on a tour of the plant along the railroad to the furnaces, and then we took the elevator up to his favorite or one of his no, favorites. Don't, don't, don't tell me anymore. I, I don't want to know. He... He fell. There was always that chance. It gets so hot up on the catwalks it can melt your brain. He probably didn't even know. And, and then... Uh, burning. Uh, horrible. Oh, God in heaven. So painful. Oh, my darling Horace. No, no. Oh. Mrs. Horace, the foreman 
said that it was all over in a flash. Mr. Horrocks would never know anything, never suffer any pain. He, he burned to death. There's no doubt about that. Oh, heaven help me. Help him. Have mercy on his soul. It was an accident, truly. He just went over right into the furnace. I reached and he was gone. But, but why? How How could he? He's been up there a million times. What was he doing? No. No. Don't. Don't tell me. I. I know. I. I want to know. Oh, John. What? Why? Why? What? Sarah, Sarah, my dear. Sarah. Is. Is it you, John? Yes. It, it, it is, isn't it? You. You're not. Mr. Roth, you're... You're John, no. Yes. Oh, I, I can't... I can't say it. No. Sarah, it was... It was all terrible. You were going to take me... Take me out of all this, John. No, no. <laughs> it's too late. Sarah, I have to tell you something, and if it comforts you, you must take it so. I really did have a deep feeling for you. I didn't before. It was a game at first. We play games with people sometimes. Sometimes they they take it seriously and sometimes they don't. But I, I can't bear it. I can't, honestly, I can't bear to see you so unhappy. I And I'll try to do what I can for you, for both of us. James, do I, do I know you, really? Really know you? How do I know that, that you didn't push him? You wanted me. How, how do I know? Well, you know, of all the things that didn't happen, that couldn't. I push him. <laughs> stumbling along there, stumbling about in the dark, pushing him. Oh, no. No. I... I think you had better go now. All right. As you wish, Sarah. But I promise you I'll try real hard to make all this up to you. There's nothing for you to make up. I'm never going to see you again. If there's going to be pain, it's mine alone. I... I know what happened up there over the furnaces. No, no, you don't. It just happened. He knew. Horrocks knew about you and me. And the crazy part about it all was... It was the first time it was really true. He'd cried wolf so many times... When, when there weren't any wolves. It, it's so strange and far away. Last night, I... I saw you go out the door, the both of you, and I, I was scared for you, not him. I was afraid he might do something to you. I never thought he'd jump. No, but he didn't. It was an accident. He slept. You'll never make me believe that. He was too wise on that catwalk. He was either trying to get rid of you or himself. Don't you see? Well, whichever way it was, I was to blame. It, it got to a point where I couldn't stand him, and he knew it. I hated his jealousies and the stories of people he'd make up and, and believe. Oh, he had imagination, all right. But the wrong kind. He knew I couldn't stand the way it was. Dirty and smoky. And ordinary. But now... Now he's... He's gone. I... I wish... I wish... He'd come back. I want him back. I loved him. I love him. She loved him. There you have it. All my searching for the poetic angle to the story, trying to paint what I saw with fancy words, the color of the sparks, the flames, the molten iron. Worthless. The real poetry lay in this woman who forgave me and her husband and would love his memory to the end of her days. I... I had my story. The skies over the world of blast furnaces are black. The men toil on. Life is ground from stone. Iron is wrought. Can we gain an insight into our age from Mr. Wells' story? Is there a point beyond the flashpoint? I'll see if I can add it all up when I return shortly. Do you know what happened in Boston in 
1636, 140 years before there was a United States of America, America's first college was founded. Our forefathers knew that the new world would need the light of knowledge as well as the light of freedom. And they were right. Ever since, ideas from our college-trained minds have helped America grow and prosper. But today, many of our colleges are in financial trouble, deep trouble. Due to rising costs of energy and most everything else, the money just isn't there for all the new books, the modern equipment, and young professors that are needed. So programs are being blue-penciled. Faculties are being reduced. We can't let this continue because we can't afford to run out of ideas. We need them so badly to solve all the problems our country faces. So make America smarter. Give to the college of your choice. A public service announcement of this station, the Advertising Council, and the Council for Financial Aid to Education. One of the curses of the machine age is that man who made the machine often becomes its slave. A machine has no soul, no heart, no hopes, no fears. To be the master of the turning wheels, the furnace, steam, electricity, sun, and atom power, man also needs no soul, nor love. At some point, does he become one with the machine? Let us be careful, then, how we use them, lest they misuse us. Our cast included Felicia Farr, Kevin McCarthy, and Court Benson. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. Is there any problem? No, not exactly. It's just something I had planned to do in town this morning. Oh, well, uh, can it wait? It, it won't take very long. I could be back here and ready to go again in about an hour or so. Would that be satisfactory? Mm, quite. Then, if you will excuse me, I I'll just get into my car, and I'll return before you know it. Good morning, Sheriff. Can I do something for you? Sheriff, something is going on. Oh, I wouldn't doubt that. Something's always going on somewhere. In my house. In your house, huh? What? That's what I want you to find out. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. Casino asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kids' PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void where prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Lucky Land Casino asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kids' PTA meeting? Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details.